What's up, everybody? Today we're going to show you how to use the Pro Stitcher on your handy quilter. We're going to do a simple edge to edge design. Let's get started. So, guys, I already have my quilt loaded here. It's already basted, and we're gonna jump right into the Pro Stitcher. I'm gonna show you just a quick little runaround of where all the tabs are and the ribbon and all the different areas, and then we're gonna load a edge to edge design. Let's do it. Here's the screen of the Pro Stitcher here. There's kind of three different sections here that we're gonna be working with. The top here are your tabs, okay? All these top ones are your tabs. The next one is your ribbon, which is this second bar here. And then on the right, this is your sidebar. So if you're ever talking to somebody about a Pro Stitcher, they're gonna say tabs, ribbon, sidebar. So in starting out, we need to choose our design first. And we're gonna go to our top tab here, and we're gonna click on the file. And then down here in our ribbon, it says design. So I'm gonna click on our design file and go to open. This is gonna open up all of the files that you have on your machine here. I and mean, since we're doing an edge to edge design, we want a continuous line design, okay? So I already have one that I know I'm gonna want on this quilt, so I'm gonna scroll down here and it's right here. Now you can do one of two things. You can double tap it and it will open up the design. So if I just tap that twice, it would open. Or I can tap it once and click the open button and our design's right there, ready to rock and roll. So now that we have our design chosen, what we're gonna do is we're going to set our area. That way this pro stitcher knows where it's going to stitch. Now, I'm gonna show you here on the machine what we're gonna set, so we're gonna go from the side here. And you wanna go about an inch over on both sides. That's, at least that's what I like to do. An inch over on both sides. That way if your quilt is a little bit out of square, you're not gonna miss stitching as if, as if you'd went straight down the edge of the quilt, okay? Now, one thing, I'm gonna set this machine up to where we go from edge to edge here to measure the width of the quilt. There's kind of some myths out there that you need to go in a perfectly straight line from one edge to the other. You don't have to do that. As long as you start on this side and you end on this side, it doesn't matter if you're at the top or at the bottom, you're just setting the width, okay? I'm gonna show you how to do that now. Okay, so as you can see here, I'm in the area tab and on our ribbon here, it says two corner. Now, you'll notice that it has the icon that's on our, on our handlebar here. You can either click here or click on the button on the machine. What you wanna do is you wanna be in the top left corner. So my needle is about an inch, inch and a half to the left of my quilt top. Okay, so I've selected two corner. I'm going from the top left corner and going to the other side. And again, like I said, you don't have to make sure it's perfectly in line. It's just measuring the width here, okay? And I'm gonna go to about an inch to the other side. And then you're gonna tap two, to two corner one more time. So now that's over to the edge, I've measured the width of the quilt. So I know that my quilt top is 64 inches long. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that in the machine right now. So my width has already been measured by the machine. Height is right here. I'm gonna click on height, 64, and then enter. Now at this point, I wanna show you one more thing here on the screen. Down here in the bottom right, there's a little house, a little home button. If you click on that, it shows us where our area is. It shows the design that we have chosen, which we're obviously gonna extend it and move it down. And then it also shows us you'll see the little crosshairs here. That is our needle, okay? So those are just really important things. Again, our home button down here takes us to the screen. All right, guys, so now that I have my design chosen, I've measured my width, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna set up the design so it repeats across the quilt, okay? I'm gonna show you how to do that now. One thing I want to do first is I want to change the size of my design that's in the program here. So at the top here, it says width 7.51. I wanna change that, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to go to modify and then my resize here on the ribbon. If you want the design to change at the same rate, you're gonna choose lock first. So I'll click the lock button, and then we're gonna change the size. So I'm gonna to go to size 12. Now the reason we're going to 12 is I want, I know I have a 20 inch throat on my machine, and I want to get the most space in my throat that I can get on my quilt top. So I'm gonna to change it to a size 12, and I like a little open, looser looking design. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna duplicate this design so that it goes over the entire area of my quilt. We were in the Modify tab, we're going over to the Repeat tab. The Pro is awesome and it has the ability to do this automatically for you. I'm gonna show you how to do it. Down here on the bottom right, I'm gonna click the Fill tab and it's going to fill up my area that I've already created here. So the entire thing's filled. You see it's not quite to the edge. We have a stretch button. It goes horizontal, horizontally and vertically. I'm gonna click the stretch button here. We've stretched it horizontally. We'll go to the vertical button here. I'm gonna stretch it vertically. So now this is filling my entire area. And if you remember, our purple lines here are the edge of our quilt. And then being the edge of the quilt, I've already gone over an inch. That's my area, I've set it an inch wider. So this is gonna go stitch a little bit over the edge of the quilt top, which is exactly what I want. We're gonna have, save this as one entire design, okay? So over here, there's the baseline button. Baseline saves this thing. You wanna make sure that your entire design is saved and it's saved 
per the quilt that you're doing right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the machine and save this file to where if the power goes out, I want to stop or something happens, you can reset this to where it's going to go right back to where it was and we'll be able to have our save design, okay? Because if you try to recreate this, it's probably going to get close, but you don't want it to be close. You want it to be perfect, okay? So let's do that now. All right, guys, so like I said, I already did the baseline here, so that's saved it right now as an entire file. Now we're going to save it as its own unit here on this quilt, okay? So I'm gonna go over to the File button and I'm gonna click Save, okay? Now, instead of saving the selected here, which is just gonna save it into my designs, I'm gonna save this workspace. So it's basically saving this in my own little file so I know this is the quilt that I'm working on. So I'm gonna to go to Workspace, okay? And you can change the name here and I'm just gonna put it, put it something that you're gonna remember. So this is a, a tractor quilt, so I'm gonna put Brody's tractor's quilt, tractor quilt and click the save button. So now that everything is saved, it's saved in my workspace, I'm ready to go and start quilting, okay? Before we do that, I'm gonna do one little safety check here. Now on my screen, it shows me where the first row is gonna start and where it's going to end. And what I wanna do is I wanna just move the machine and make sure that it is possible to quilt where I've set it to quilt, okay? It should be, but you should do a little double check. So I've come up to the top, it's definitely gonna fit inside of here. Gonna go down here to the bottom. It's definitely gonna fit here. So we're gonna take it over to the other side and we're gonna start. It's going to, you're gonna get close to where you were going to start, but it's gonna automatically put it in the right spot. So I'm just gonna get close. Okay, so we're ready to start. It's on the left side of the machine. You can see that my little crosshair is up here. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the Pro Stitcher. On your ribbon here, it'll pre-select quilts. And then on our sidebar, it's giving us some options. We can choose where we want to tie a knot in the start, tie a knot at the end. I'm gonna click the end as well. And this right here is personal preference and you're gonna decide this as you have a little more experience on the quilting, okay? Or doing the quilting. So once I've selected those, down on the bottom left here, I'm gonna click run. So I click the run button and it's bringing us a little verify settings tab, okay? It shows you your stitch length. It shows you whether you have your tie, tie offs or tie ons um, at the beginning, at the end. Shows you your stitch speed. And right here I said stitches per minute. So I still have this in the basting mode. I'm gonna bring those up to a number 10 because that's what I want to be quilting at. So it gives you a quick little double check. And one thing, as you can see the little flashing memo right here, it says make sure needle's up. You really want to make sure your needle's up. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold the thread and I'm going to press proceed. So my first row just finished. Now it's pausing and saying, hey, it's time to roll and time to move the machine, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull up my bobbin thread here, cut it, that way we don't have one long strand of bobbin thread going across, and then we're gonna move the machine. All right guys, so I've moved the machine over here to almost the end of my quilts. I haven't gone all the way over to the edge. I'm gonna show you what the next step is on screen. There's a little, two little ducks here, it says follow. Okay, so if I click follow and I'm gonna zoom in, it shows our design, it shows our rows, and it shows our crosshairs, okay? So I want to bring my crosshairs down. They need to be above the highest point of our next row. So this is our highest point right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop our needle right here. That way we can move the design and move the machine without getting a screwed up of where our rows are, okay? So needle's going down. Next step is what we're gonna do is there's a drag button right here. So think of this as you're dragging the machine and the quilt at the same time, okay? So I'm gonna click the drag button, and now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna unhook the clamps, and we're gonna roll, advance the quilt top. So I'm gonna unhook my side clamps here, I'm gonna do it on the other side, and then we're gonna advance the machine, and we're gonna roll it forward, okay? Unhook my rollers here, right here. So now that everything's unclamped, we're going to roll this back, okay? So just, you can grab the top bar here, you can do it from the side, we're gonna just let it roll, okay? Okay, so I've advanced this all the way up. You don't want it far enough up that you've hit your top bar here because you might not be able to get that high on your next row, so you don't want to do that. But at the same time, you want to give yourself plenty of space to where you can get your next row on the bottom. So take it all the way up, maximize your quilting space, but don't touch this bar. So now that I advanced the quilt top where it needs to be, it's not touching the top bar, what I'm going to do before I click the drop button is we're going to put our ratchet stops back on and put our bungee clamps back on. That way, when we click the drop button on our screen, everything's set and it's ready to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And I'm going to tighten this up just a tiny bit so that our tension's good on here, okay? And you can check, so remember your knuckle check. You're gonna put your finger underneath, you're gonna make sure you can grab down to your first knuckle so you have your tension right on the quilt top, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and put the bungee clamps back on. And you shouldn't have to adjust these at all because they were already set to 
what you had them previously, okay? Your quilt's not growing sideways, at least it shouldn't be at this point, okay? Now what we're gonna do is on our screen, we're gonna click the drop button that drops our design back in place. Okay, so you can see here on my screen, the whole design has drug up, okay? Cause this is rolled up on our bar up here now, okay? So that's exactly how you want it to look. Cause it's moved your design and your quilt up, okay? You're gonna click the drop button here, okay? So click that and it's dropped our design back in place. So you're ready to go. Before we keep going, we just wanna base the edges though. So we've already basted everything. We have a video on basting, make sure you check it out. But we're gonna go over to the Pro Stitcher here and we're gonna click the baste button right here. Now in doing the basting, we're just gonna baste the sides of the quilt so everything can keep staying square as we're going down the quilt. Okay, so I just finished basting. We're gonna take it out of the basting mode. We're gonna do a little safety check first before we start on our next row. So right over here on the machine, what we're gonna do is we're gonna click the follow button again, zoom in, and we're gonna match our needle, our crosshairs here to the top of, to our last row that we stitched, just to make sure that our design is where we think it is so we can start the next row, okay? And you see it's right here on this line, and that's also down here on where it's already stitched. So it's showing you as I go over to the next one, on the screen it's also in the right spot, okay? So once we're at this point, we know that things are where they need to be, I'm gonna hit that resume button. Machine's gonna take it where it needs to go, and it's gonna do its thing. So we're at our last row of our quilt here. So we're ready to finish it off, but our quilt top is obviously pinned right here to our leader. So what we need to do is we need to go ahead and put a basting stitch here to finish off our quilt. Now there's a couple different ways to do this. Here's one way, okay? We're gonna actually do two basting stitches. We're gonna start by doing our first basting stitch up against here, go all the way down, okay? And you're gonna make a large basting stitch. So you can change it here on your machine or just move it quickly and it'll get you a larger stitch, okay? Once we do that, we're gonna remove the pins, pull our leader back, and we are going to put a regular basting stitch down at the bottom. That way, by putting the big one, the big basting stitch, we have now given ourselves a good straight line once we pull our pins out. So we're gonna go ahead and do that now. We're gonna pull our thread up. So I just finished our large basting stitch here. We're gonna take it back down, and we're gonna remove our pins, and then we'll be able to do a regular basting stitch at the bottom. Now I'm gonna go ahead and just do a regular basting stitch at the bottom. And all that stitch did before we pulled the pins out was just make it where it's straight and it's not gonna, you're not gonna lose some of your tension on the quilt top as you're moving your leader, okay? So it's gonna come down here, just do a regular basting stitch. So I just finished our second basting stitch here. Now we have our first one that's up here on top. We're gonna go ahead and just pull that out so we can finish our last row. Okay guys, so our quilt is ready to do our final row. We basted the bottom here. Now, a lot of times what will happen is people will say, hey, you know, my design was, I didn't measure right or something happened and my design, you know, you have this much extra design underneath the bottom of your quilt. We're gonna show you how to crop that out. I'm gonna show you here on the Pro Stitcher. So now guys, to crop out, you can see here on my design, I have just a couple of little stitches that are going to be outside of the area. You can see our purple lines here, which is the area that we use when we set up the quilt. Obviously our quilt has been rolled up here onto the top so we're gonna get rid of this. We're gonna go to area in our, in our tabs. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna click clear. We're gonna clear out this area. Okay, so you can see that our purple lines have disappeared. So we're gonna set up a new area. That way we can cut out these bottom stitches. We're gonna come over to the side of our, of our quilts. We're gonna make sure that we're outside of the stitching. Okay, and we're gonna click two corner. Okay, once I do that, I'm gonna move it down to the side. I'm gonna go down to the other side here. So I've just moved my crosshair here, my, my machine head over to the side. I'm gonna click two corners one more time to set that width. Now again, you're, you're gonna enclo enclose in this box here that we're about to make every stitch that you do not want to stitch, okay? We're cutting out anything underneath here. So mine are only just a couple here at the bottom of my purple line. Now we're gonna set our height of our area down here. So obviously I don't have very much, I'm just gonna set it to like a four. And we've created ourselves this new purple box. That way this is everything that we're going to be removing from the pattern. Okay, so once we're at this point now, we're gonna go to modify and we're gonna crop our design here. So I already have crop, crop selected. If not, you just click on that, so crop. And our sidebar here shows us our different options. So we wanna crop the inside of our area. So I'm gonna click inside. So that's everything in the inside. You see those disappeared there. And then also you have a lot of start and stop points here. We can just clear those out. So we're gonna click edges and it's gonna 
do everything here at the bottom that we do not want, okay? So once we've done that and everything looks good how we want it, we're gonna click baseline, which is basically saving this now. What we need to do now is we need to set a new start point, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to Pro Stitcher, we're gonna be on Quilt, we're gonna go to New Start and End, okay? You've got your different starting points of your rows that we've already done, okay? Over here on the right, we have our size adjustments or our starting point adjustments. This right here is stitches, and then it goes progressively bigger, and this is going to the, your big jumps, your rows, okay? So I'm gonna click this, I've gone from here to here, Again, there to there, there to there, and I'm down to my last row. So now it knows it's ready to start right there. Okay, once we're at this point now, we're gonna go back to quilt. So we're ready to quilt, and I'm gonna click run, and it's gonna finish our last row. Okay guys, so just like that, we finished our quilts up and we're done. It is very easy once you know the simple steps on the Pro Stitcher to use it and to be doing edge to edge quilting on your own. We hope you guys do it. If you have any questions, down in the comment below, you can ask questions. We know you can do it. Check it out, guys. My name is Brody, teaching you how to select a pro, and we'll see you next time.